It's Monday Night Sports Talk on the airnetwork.net. Welcome in, everybody. Greg Banks in the studio. Joining us from Altoona, Pennsylvania tonight, Dave Shannon. And from Hamburg, Pennsylvania, down east near Philadelphia, it's Jimmy Ty, all live on the airnetwork.net, as we always are, guys, on Monday evening. I want to say uh, get well soon to our, our cohort and our uh, compadre, Chad States, who has been under the weather lately. Chad, if you're listening, hey, we wish you well and speedy recovery, buddy. Hey, Dave and uh, Jimmy, how are you guys uh, making out so far? It's eh, the end of the month. Uh, I'll start with Dave and then Jim. Uh, you have a good January so far? Yeah, hey, got to go fishing <laughs> yeah, at you the did. end of January. Wow. And, uh, you know, it, no snow on the ground, no, no ice in the water. Mm-hmm. January 25th, and it's Woo. like, if you would have told me back in the fall that I could have done that, yeah. I'd have said, you're crazy. Yeah. You're absolutely crazy. Let me ask you about uh, that, Dave, real quick, and Jimmy, I'll get with you in a second. But fishing-wise, yeah. in your spot in the Huntington County region <laughs> near my house, we talked about it, Cars have been lined up the last few weeks when we haven't had really bad weather temperatures in the 40s. I imagine the water temperatures are nice and cold. Are they going for the trout or are they going for the pike, maybe the muskies this time of year? Because I know guys are fishing on the creeks and rivers now. Um, I, I think, A, there's a des- desire just to be out there just, to do yeah. a little fishing. Yeah. And uh, second of all, I mean, it is a good time. And by the way, you're at the getting close to the point now where you won't be able to fish for trout for an extended period oh, because right. yeah. uh, trout season goes out at the beginning of March and you cannot fish for trout again until your respective first day right. of trout season. Mm-hmm. So, you know, there's some guys that are out there, I'm sure, trying to get some uh, trout fishing in uh, in areas that will be closed because uh, they get stocked. Yeah. So uh, I think it's a little bit of that and a little bit of how can you, if you're a real fishing enthusiast, okay. you just cannot pass up on days like we've had recently oh, no. uh, and not go out there and go fish. And that was, I didn't really care if I even caught anything last week. It was a question of being able to say Get out. in the future that I did this on January 25th. Oh. Back here, uh, yeah, I, I was like, uh, back in uh, 2017, I was out there fishing for trout in yeah. January. You know, the fact that you even bring that up, I had an old friend, the guy's probably been gone now for over 40 years, but as a kid in the 60s, he fished throughout the entire winter. I mean, that's how he fed his family, and he fished all the time. And his name Mm -hmm. was Mr. Henry, and I remember him putting on his snowsuit and going down to the river, of course, it was flowing, and he would be catching maybe suckers, fall fish, you know, all kinds of fish, but that's how, and he fished all year round. So I think of him when we're in periods of time like now, where there's no ice really on the creeks or streams, and the fish, they're moving kind of slow, let's face it. But they're oh, still sure. out there. You know, they're oh, still yeah. out there and they're still biting. So uh, let me ask Jimmy, because, Jimmy, I saw you on Facebook one time dunking a basketball on, a, on an asphalt court. You were out there. It was wintertime. Are you uh, yeah. going inside? Are you working out inside or outside nowadays? What are you doing basketball-wise? Well, I work out, out outside. I'll go up to the park here in Shoemakersville and mm-hmm. – uh, just play a ball, just dunk the ball, and um, just shoot around for a couple hours after work, just to relieve some some stress, some steam. Yeah. Since like like with like what Dave said, like that the fishing is so beautiful. Yeah. Outside, I can see I'm shooting hoops on an asphalt court. Right. You know, uh, on January 24th or 25th or whatever it is. So. Mm-hmm. I've been just playing like a lot of basketball, just shooting around. That's basically what I've been, you know. Yeah, I was curious. My, that's, my, that's my workout. Okay, because I saw you on the court on Facebook one time, and I thought, wow, it's got to be a little cold out there. But you didn't seem, it didn't seem like it bothered you. You were kind of dressed warmly, but not overly dressed. And uh, I guess I'm probably the only one in the whole group that doesn't get out into the open much. You know, I need to go maybe ride my bike. No, I don't. Um, speaking of Monday Night Sports Talk. You're such a Wilton flower. <laughs> I am. As, oh, I, get, as I get older, I'm not Come as adventurous now. as I you used to be. Out. you got to go out. you yeah. got to go fishing. Yeah. you got to well, play some ball or you something. You know, and I'm thinking I should do that, Jimmy. But there's other uh, circumstances that won't allow me to do that. <laughs> and and when, when I, I'm able to do that, believe me, I'll be the first guy out there with my rod. And I'll try out some new spinners and maybe some new lures and maybe just a couple of earthworms. But anyhow... 
Listen, oh, basketball. We, basketball, I can try that too. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. We had uh, Monday Night Sports Talk, Greg Banks in the studio, Dave Shannon, Altoona, Jimmy Ty Hamburg. Hey, guys, it's that time of the year, really. Just before the Super Bowl, maybe you've noticed this over the years, it seems to be a lull in the action when it comes to sports. And maybe that's because we've been attuned to football now for the last, what, five months? And then all of a sudden, yeah. there's nothing but the Pro Bowl. And we'll talk about that in a moment. But anyhow, here it is, Super Bowl week, Super Bowl 51. It, of course, is happening in Houston, Texas. I hope they have great weather down there, or at least decent weather. As And it, they, I didn't know, Dave, is there a dome down there yet where they're playing in Houston these days, or is it outside? No, no, they play, uh, they play indoors uh, where the Houston Texans play. Okay, okay. Uh, that, of course, is a domed facility. Well, then, uh, it'll be oh, no problem then. You know, yeah, not no, going to be a problem. Uh, the, the weather won't be a factor. One of the things is, you know, you, <laughs> that we've maybe sort of a commentary on how soft society has become. But yeah. uh, now when we have uh, facilities in the South, we don't put roofs over them for any reason other than – Oh, it's so hot out. Yeah, yeah. And, and so we need to be air conditioned. So we have mm. to have a roof over our head. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, it's kind of crazy. But that's more of what happens now. You look at now uh, Miami, the Marlins' new uh, dome. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's mm. a, It's a beautiful place. Right. Uh, I would actually oh, yeah. like to see that. Uh, but, uh, you know, the reason that was done, two reasons, one, the heat and humidity of the Miami area. And second of oh, all, yeah. Miami has a reputation every afternoon at about five or six o'clock, right when teams are taking batting practice or starting to get loose for a, a game that evening, right around that time, you get a batch of thunderstorms that come. Oh, hmm. yeah. Oh my okay. God. Yeah. Day. yeah. Jimmy, you were and, down in that uh, area for a while. I remember uh, as a videographer for some television yeah. stations. So you would be yeah. probably, uh, of course, understand what Dave's talking about, about those thunderstorms that are moving in oh, certain periods God, of yeah. the day. Yeah. So well, let me ask you guys. So there's that law, but there were a couple of things of note over the weekend that I, I paid attention to. Number one, in tennis, and I know none of us really follow the tennis game that, uh, it's not like we're fanatics, but I do know names like Federer. I do know names like Serena and Venus Williams. And Dave, those girls, the Williams sisters, played in the, the singles finals in the Australia uh, Australian Open on Saturday morning at 3 o'clock in the morning. I got up to watch this thing because I thought... Oh my I may God. not get a chance to see this again. <laughs> no, seriously. I had because I may not get a chance to see history being made again. Serena was going go. after her twenty third, okay, tournament or open tournament championship. Now there's only been one other person in in, in tennis, Margaret Court, who by the way, mm-hmm. they named the court after in Australia because she's Australian. She's won twenty four titles. And all I want to ask you guys is in, in the idea of Serena and Venus Williams, they changed the tennis game. I mean, I mean, here they, they've been out here for like almost 20 years. They were like 12, 13 years old when they started. They're now in their 30s. That's amazing. But, Dave, is Serena Williams one of the top, I don't know, one of the greatest sports persons of all time? Uh, and the fact is she's probably going to break that record at 24 this year. Oh, yeah. No, I think Serena Williams is definitely uh, one of the top athletes of all time. Mm -hmm. Uh, You know, she may give Secretariat a run for his money. Okay. Uh, But (laughs) nonetheless, uh, the the bottom line is she needs to be a part of that conversation. What she has done in tennis is not really all that dissimilar from what Tiger Woods did in Uh, golf, except mm -hmm. Serena kept going. Tiger's. Oh, he's he's it. faltering right now. He, you know, yeah. it, it, having said that, he was in a um, an open tournament this weekend, trying to make a. I guess I guess he's trying to make a comeback, okay? And he didn't even make the cut. I think he got up until Thursday, maybe Friday, and he was out of it by Saturday. But Jimmy, having said yeah. that, do you re- the reason uh, I don't know. I just don't see people talking about Serena like a Michael Jordan. Like, Michael sent her a special pair of shoes shoes. with number 23 on them. You know, to signify her 23rd tournament or open tournament championship. I don't think we give her the same props that we give. Is it because it's a female versus a guy, you think, Jimmy? Or 
Is it just no, the, what, you know? No, what it is, what it is, is um, because it's tennis. Yeah, like, uh, yeah. And, and and just just like what you said, not too many people here follow tennis, especially like like they'll follow the U.S. Open whenever the U.S. Opens here in America right. on Labor Day weekend because mm-hmm. it's here in the United States. Okay, but who's gonna watch you know uh, the Aussie Open minus you, Greg, at three o'clock in the morning? <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. Well, three the, o'clock in the morning, I'm in bed. Yeah, and know? I but, and but I even, no, but but the thing is, it's yeah. they look at like athletes like Derek Jeter or Michael Jordan. Yeah. You know, um. Because they play like that dominant sport. Yeah, they play you know? popular they, sports. They yeah. play baseball. They play football or basketball. Right. Yeah. And because even whenever like you look at a, an athlete like a Pete Sampras yeah. or Andre Agassi, them guys were really good back in the 90s. Or even better. No talked about them because they were tennis players. Yeah. That's the difference. Jimmy McEnroe. Tennis is not a dominant sport. Yeah. John McEnroe. Yeah, or John, like, yeah. We tennis. talked about him a lot because he had a bad attitude. He was sort of like. Yeah, uh, that's why. Yeah, sort of like that yeah, Justin Bieber. Because... And we'll talk about him. Uh. <laughs> because uh, because tennis is not a dominant sport like okay. the other like the other four major sports are. All right, and that's the reason I bring that up because again, you know, we often throw around the term Dave, the greatest athlete ever. Now I do remember I asked you guys last year the Mount Rushmore of sports. Okay, who would you put on that? I remember Dave put Serena Williams on Mount Rushmore, and Jimmy, yes. I think you wanted me to revisit that. Because, I don't know, maybe it's changed since we talked about it last year. Now, there are how many guys on Mount Rushmore? Five? Four. Okay, four, four guys yeah. on Mount Rushmore. Who would, you, who would be on your Mount Rushmore of athletics now? Uh, if you had to say, here on this, what, 30th day of January 2017, your Mount R- Rushmore, Jimmy Ty, consists of whom? Oh man! Those four say, people don't don't take all day, Jimmy, because we got no, a lot no, to no. cover I here. I know, I know, I know. I would say uh, <laughs> Wayne Gretzky. There you go. Bill Russell. Gotcha. Uh, then I would say I, I will put Serena Williams in there. Now you're just doing that because we said that Dave put her on no. his. Okay. No, because I don't like just, copycats just now, record, Jimmy. No, just just look at the record she's going to break. Okay. Yeah. By, okay. By the end of the summer. Yeah. You know so. You know, she's a dominant female athlete. All right. So I, so I would put Serena in there. And my last one. Gretzky, Russell, would, Williams, and? I would say Mike Tyson. Just uh, Mike Tyson. Okay. Mike Tyson. There you go. All right. And Dave. I don't know why Mike Tyson. Just just Mike Tyson. Yeah, you were throwing somebody out there right now. You're putting yeah. some, throwing somebody under the bus is what you just did, Jimmy. Because you could have <laughs> said, you, you said Tom Brady, but you didn't want to commit to that. You know? Um, you could have said, what's her name again? Becky? Yeah, no, I'm just kidding. Dave, who do you have on Mount Rushmore? <laughs> uh, I'm going to do Tom Brady. Okay. I'm going to stick with Serena Williams. There you go. I am I am okay. also going to do uh, Wayne Gretzky, I think, is a very good I, I like pick that. by Jimmy. Yeah, I like and, that. And uh, the other one I'm going to add, and this is just because of who I am. We're going to have two hockey guys. <laughs> go ahead. Wait. The way I felt, no, the way I felt about it, and that's Roberto Clemente. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. See, Jimmy, and I think yeah. you would have probably changed your mind because I think you mentioned Roberto last year. But anyhow, I, I like that, Dave, and I like both yours, too, Jimmy. Uh, if I had one, seriously, I would have to think, you know, Mount Rushmore, that's pretty permanent structure there, isn't it? It's not going yes, anywhere sir. soon unless, of course, the Taliban come over here and just blow us up. Uh, but they're not going to go after our Mount Rushmore of athletics. Somehow or other, I got to either put Hank Aaron or Willie Mays there, first of all. I mean, that would be in my truest heart of hearts because I grew up watching those guys, and they were amazing. What uh, about Jackie? Yeah. When you, you know, start to think about that era. Well, I never too. watched Jackie, though. See, I, I don't remember. Well, Jack- I do remember okay. Satch Page, though. You know, he was like near the sure. end of his career. Remember, they brought him back so he could get his retirement money. And he oh, was yeah. a guy that said that he was so fast, Dave. What did he say? He could jump out of bed and turn off a light before it went out or something. I forget what it was. <laughs> but I'm like, that's pretty damn fast, you know? Yeah. I've been with some yes. ladies like that. But anyhow, listen. So I'd have to say I'm going to go with uh, Willie Mays because he was like actually my first baseball experience of watching the Say Hey Kid. Then I'd have to say football-wise, uh, amazingly enough, I saw Jim Brown play, you know, and he was incredible. So I go yeah. back old school, man. I got Willie Mays. I got Jim Brown. I got, and I'm sure somebody put OJ on that list, but you have to cross him off because he can't have his picture on anything other than a billboard or a bulletin board at the post office. So 
No, although he's incarcerated he's what, now. Mailman? No, we're talking about. <laughs> 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 no, Jimmy, they put your. Never mind. But uh, so I said Willie Mays, and I said who else did I say? Jim Brown. Then I'm going to come kind of like uh, move it a little bit, um, you know, here into our era. And I got to agree with you, Brady is going to be on there. Seriously, he'll be on there. From the boxing world, I got to say Muhammad Ali. So those are my guys. Those are my my Mount Rushmore, those four people. Okay? So yours is skewed a little bit lower. This kind of went by age as to who we all picked. Yeah. yeah. I was kind of off the board by picking Brady, but yeah. I, you know, but look like about I can sit here and bitch and moan and complain. And you know what my problem with Tom Brady is? What's it's that? not really Tom Brady. It's the announcers. It's yeah. the personalities that call the football games. Yep. <laughs> yeah, it's not Tom Brady. Yeah, no, you're right. It's, it's, that's all right. Dave's getting in front of the media yeah. and says, "I'm great. I'm Tom Terrific." No, all of those things were done by the media. He yeah. just goes out and plays the game very, very well. Hey, speaking of the media, and Jimmy, you think I'll, I can, I'll, you I'll let think you. I can change one of my picks. Yeah, but listen, I, let me. Well, okay, change your pick. Who do you want, Jimmy? Go ahead. Michael Phelps. Okay, you're going with Phelps, and you're taking who out? That's a very good choice. Yeah, who are you taking out of there, though? you got to kick somebody to the Tyson. curb. Okay, Tyson. Tyson's out, so we'll go with Phelps. Hey, but listen, speaking of Dave, we're talking about the media. Monday Night Sports Talk here on the airnetwork.net with Dave Shannon, Altuna, Jimmy Ty Hamburg, down around Philadelphia, Greg Banks in the studio. That media craziness is going to begin tonight at the Super Bowl. Everybody flew in earlier today, and you know, on Monday night, traditionally, that's when the weird and wacky people get to ask some crazy questions to the players, and some of that will continue tomorrow. And then the coaches want to get that out of the way so they can get serious with their teams. Now, I watched uh, New England just walk off the plane probably about an hour and a half ago. They arrived in Houston. Uh, I'm not sure exactly when the Falcons are probably arriving now. I think they came yesterday. Oh, did they? Okay. okay. Yesterday. Yes. So what's yes. going to happen tonight is now you'll have all these, well, if the Air Network, if I said, hey, Dave Shannon, I got like free pass to go to Houston. You could spend a whole week there, you know, and get to eat and drink beer and like go fishing and maybe show up for work, Dave, and get that interview on Monday night. You could ask the weirdest questions. Let me ask you this. If that were your assignment tonight for the Air Network, who would you want to talk to first, and what question would you want to ask them, Dave? Quite frankly, boy, no holds a- barred. I mean, you can ask these guys anything on Monday night of Super Bowl week. Of course, they don't have to answer you. Yeah, yeah. No, uh, boy, that, that is uh, that is such a tough uh, thing. You know, there's. Uh, I mean, there's, there's a lot a of guys part- like you know. Would you talk to Brady? Like, I think Jimmy would probably want to talk to Julio Jones. I, I just think Jimmy has this thing about Julio. Right? I love my Julio. So what would you ask Julio then, Jimmy, while Dave's thinking about what he's going to ask somebody? How big are your hands? Oh, my God. Why would his hands have anything to do with, like, oh, okay. Because he can catch, because he's not, oh, okay. he can catch the football. I thought you were referring to that Donald Trump statement that he no, made about, no, okay. No, because no. he can catch the football. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, it's like now? he has Velcro. It's like he has yeah. Velcro on his hands Well, sometimes. listen, oh, yeah. old L. Beckham Jr., I mean, he was catching balls, like, behind his head with one hand. You know, come on, man, they're wearing gloves that probably do have some kind. I'm not saying they have stick oh, them on them. Oh, believe me, they do. There's some gloves. That, yeah. Those gloves have something on them because you can't just be. Yeah. And they're made that they way, right? They are sticky. They're manufactured that way, right, Dave? I, yes, I they assume are. that they're regulation yep, they gloves that they're allowed to wear in the NFL. Unlike pine tar in baseball, you can't use that for the bat any longer. I mean, really could never do it. So you would ask him about his hands, and he would probably say, well, what about them? I mean, how do you elaborate on that question? What would you say, like, well, Julio, you just seem to catch so many balls all the time. No, I, no, I would say something like, you know, you're one of the best receivers in the NFL. Um, is it because of the is it because of the size of your hands catching it, or is it just the way the ball is thrown towards you in the perfect location for, for you to be able to catch the football? Okay, so you ask me that question. Let's say I'm Julio, and I say, "Well, thank you, buddy. Um, I see that you're with E Entertainment Television, and so Correct. let me kind of no, keep no, this." But, but the other thing, but, but but a serious question I would ask him. Okay. Is, well, you only let's get say one. I'm down there. Let, I'm, I'm going to go back to my TV days. Okay. Okay, no, I'm referring back to my TV days. You're getting days serious now. Okay, go ahead. No, no, 
that, that was just a stupid question. The one question I would ask him is, is um, what what type of preparation do you guys have before the start of a football game? Like the music that you guys listen to, is, is there a certain type of song that that the Falcons listen to or that you listen to in the locker room to get your um the dude just to get your mind set on playing the game? Hey Jimmy, and if he says, Well, this is what I listen to you would say, Damn, that's the song we play that's every the week. Air, that's that's the our theme network. song. Wow. <laughs> that's the air network there. There you go. Nope. Uh, then anyway. I would ask him questions about um because you know he's gonna be facing off against a uh, Malcolm Butler. Yeah. You know, have you ever since since the Falcons uh, <laughs> made the Super Bowl, yeah. ha- have you been studying the way Melkin's been playing? Okay, stuff like well, that. Well, Jimmy, so. okay, so uh, God love you, Jimmy, because he was only giving you one question. It's a wonder they haven't pulled you out of there and started pulling you down the hallway. That's by why now. I'm a videographer. <laughs> okay, not Dave, a reporter. Yeah, okay. Thank you, because I mean, you would be like he'd be already getting up and say, "Okay, I've already answered four questions. That's all I'm supposed to answer. I'm out." <laughs> Dave, who are you gonna t- Dave? Dave, who are you talking to, and what question would you like to ask him? Seriously, I mean, like even Belichick, uh, for instance, yeah. or you know any of I'm those gonna, guys. I'm gonna roll to Matt Ryan. There you go. And okay. I and the reason why is uh, this this guy has put in a lot of work in the NFL, and for all the reasons that we stated last week, that we don't know a whole lot about the Falcons because we live in a certain area where it's a rarity yeah. that we get to see a Falcons right. game. Uh-huh. But I do know this. He has toiled. He has done well. I saw an interview with him, uh, and he was talking about the play calling that he has to do and the intricacy of the types of plays that are in this playbook and the names of them. Mm. And he has to be able to spew all this stuff out uh, just like that's. A, it's almost like learning a new language. Uh, but my my question for him would be, you've worked this hard to get this far. Is it uh, is it something that would be? And let's say you're never going to get back to the Super Bowl. Right. If you don't win this game, does that completely blemish your career, as far as the way people would look at you and what you accomplished over the course of your life? So, it, it, even in your own mind. Would you feel that that blemished your career because you made it to the Super Bowl right. and you did not win it? And you'd be looking for an honest answer. And I'm sure he would probably give you the honest answer, whatever that case would be. But tonight, again, is uh, Monday night, just before Super Bowl 51. This is the night, and I think maybe sometimes tomorrow, and then it's done, where the ridiculous and the insane networks show up, and there are a bunch of them. Not just the air network, but I mean, there are networks I've never heard of until Super Bowl time. And these people show up in the most ridiculous costumes. So do the players, because I guess they're supposed to be somewhat relaxed and understand that they're going to be talking with people from all over the world, even people from fashion magazines. Heaven sure. forbid. And that's why Cam Newton loved it so much last year. Because he could wear his, he could wear those Esperdale pants or whatever those things are to come up to his knees, along with uh, his shoes and his funny looking shirts, and um, that's the Super Bowl, Super Bowl Fifty One. Hats with feathers. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Dave, let me ask you this: Pro Bowl exhibition yesterday, exhibition All Star matchup. You know, in both of those, and I didn't watch the Pro Bowl. I kind of tuned in for a second. It looked like a clown. It sort of looked like a circus of some kind. The NHL, a little bit more serious in that. What do they have to do different to bring people to these exhibitions? Because they're not the same as we expect. Because, again, guys aren't playing their hearts out. But in the NHL case, there's money involved in that thing. So, obviously, there's some things to pay attention to in the NHL exhibition or all-star game yesterday. Yeah, not that it's a big payday, but you're splitting a million dollars between about 12 or 13 people. Yeah. So you're getting somewhere around $100,000. So, you know, even if it's just like, okay, I'm going to go buy a new car with the money I made at the All-Star game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, it, 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 it does give them something. And I will say this, uh, you know, the way they play that is you play two 10-minute periods, uh, and that's considered a game. Three to a side. Three on- 
Yeah, the okay. three-on-three matchup. Mm-hmm. And so you play those two 10-minute periods. I'll tell you what, that last 10-minute period yeah. of the Metropolitan and Pacific matchup for the million dollars, oh. uh, those guys were pretty darn – I mean, they yeah, were pretty serious. You know, you weren't getting big hits no. like you do during a regular hockey game. Mm-hmm. But these guys were being serious to the point where they actually were blocking shots. It's like, I want that. Yeah. I want that million dollars. So first off, they change the game from the standpoint of they take it to that three on three, which is so much excitement. Oh, yeah. Especially at the skill level that these guys have. Right. So you have that going on. And then you have the fact that they have a payday at the end of it as well. And I think the other thing they did to make this weekend in particular that good was it's the 100 year anniversary of the league's existence. Oh, yes. Right. Yeah. And they had the top, uh, the ones that were still alive Mm -hmm. uh, of the top 100 that they picked uh, were there over the course of the weekend. So for an overall fan experience uh, and add to the fact that the Pacific uh, Division was one that, you know, that's where the Kings do play. And they did make it to that final against the Metropolitan. So. You know, they got to see their guys play. Yeah. Uh, you know, and they got to see these just hockey legends that were there over yeah, the Yeah, and they the even had that. Too. Well, they have that celebrity matchup against some of the old pros coming back, you know, playing, uh, you know, exhibition hockey. Uh, and, and let me ask you this question. Justin Bieber, that was the hardest hit all. Oh. That was the hardest hit, like, all weekend long with, I think it was Proton, slammed him right into the, um, is that who it was? Slammed him right Longer into the glass. Yeah, and that was so yeah. cool because he held him in check up against there like, you little son of a bitch. You know, <laughs> it's like, and it was a photo moment that it went worldwide and it looked like Bieber had swallowed his tongue there for a second, Jimmy. Did you see that? I'm like, yeah, I saw that. It was, um. He thinks he can play hockey, huh? He he thinks he can play hockey or (laughs) basketball. You know, next time, whenever the All Star NBA All Star game, yeah, Bieber's going to be out there playing basketball. But the greatest, but the funny thing was, was Chris Pronger is a former Flyer. Yeah, and what's the deal with the Bieber like stepping on somebody's logo? Was if if you look at the photo, whenever Bieber got hit, yeah, against the boards. Pronger was laughing. Yeah, okay, that's what it was. Yeah, he was, but he had him, like, up against the board. Yeah, he had nowhere to go. Board. That was awesome. I was hoping his nose got broken on that glass, but he had a shield on. But listen, what's up, Dave, with Snoop Dogg? What Dog? a bunch of haters. Listen, I'm not trying to hate, but, I, you know, here again, he's a kid <laughs> awesome. that I, I didn't grow up listening to him, you know, and my grandson probably heard him for a year and then moved on, and that's a good thing, <laughs> you know, but here again, and Hannah Montana was another one. I was like, oh, my God, I'm glad she's not doing that anymore. You know, cause, but anyhow, Dave, Snoop Dogg showed up. Now, what's the correlation between Snoop Dogg and the NHL? Yeah, he was there, and he was, like, throwing down some F-bombs during one of the shows for the NHL. And I'm like, dude, who invited him to the party? <laughs> you know? Hey, anybody's what's invited his connection? to be a hockey fan. Yeah, and, but he was actually you know, a part of the show. It's like, come on now. I'm sure well, there are some other people that the NHL would be able to find that they'd want to put up on the stage. <laughs> well, hey, you know, this is like, uh, you know, you, you're, you're an open tent. You're a big tent. Yeah. You know, you invite everybody in. Yeah, and buddy. when Snoop Dogg shows up at something, he has to be the center of attention. That's the only reason he showed up. Yeah. And, and, well, that may be true, too, but attention. I can't imagine I'm on a flight back home on the uh, Penguins and somebody's playing Snoop Dogg on their – maybe they are. You know, maybe I'm not I'm, – because he wasn't hip to me. 30 years ago, you know? Yeah. And all of a sudden, he's sort of like Bobby Brown and Whitney Houston showing up on a reality show, and all of a sudden, they're big. Of course, Whitney's dead now, and Bobby is fat. So, you know what I'm saying? It's like the Kardashians. What are you famous for? Well, 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 the thing is about Snoop Dogg, Mm -hmm. okay, is back in 1994, I believe it was 94, whatever that was. Gin and juice, yep. no, no, no. In his video, Snoop Doggy Dog. Okay. Or Doggy whatever. Was he wearing one of those hockey sweaters? He was wearing a Pittsburgh Penguins jersey. Oh, that's right. And he's a big Pittsburgh Penguin he's a and big Pirates. Pittsburgh fan. Yeah, he's a Pirate he's a big, fan too. He's yeah. A pirate fan, that's a Pets true. fan, a Steeler fan. Yeah. You know. So so there you go. That's his relation to hockey is the okay. Pittsburgh Penguins. Well, there I, you, go. you know, and if he showed up at the Air Network, I'd probably have to put him on and say, Hey Snoop, tell me a little bit about that new cooking show you have with Martha Stewart now. It's like, how's that working out? 
<laughs> you know, so anyhow. Hey, Dave, listen, and Jimmy, we'll talk more on sports. There's more surprises to be had. Even though it was a soft weekend sports-wise, there are things going on in the background that I'm not even sure you guys are aware of. And we'll talk about that coming up next here on Monday Night Sports Talk. Grab the Big Kahuna, the 24-square-cut pizza with your choice of one topping for only $19.99. Now at All-American Pizza and Subs at 612 Washington Street, downtown Huntington. All-American Pizza and Subs has delivery, and they're the home of great pizza, subs, salad, wings, and more for lunch, dinner, or a late-night snack. Call All-American Pizza and Subs right now at 643-0222. Closed Mondays, All-American Pizza and Subs. Like us on Facebook. Brenneman's Meat Markets are celebrating nearly 70 years in providing Huntington County with quality USDA-approved processed pork, chicken, and beef products. Brenneman's has two locations in the county where the tradition of the finest meats are found in the region. Stop by Brenneman's Huntington weekdays from 8 to 6, Saturdays 8 to 3. Mount Union, open 9 to 5 weekdays and 9 to 2 on Saturdays. Choose specials of 10 to $50 meat packs containing your favorite meats. Or stop by and ask about our select custom cuts, prepared and packaged while you wait. Brenneman's Meat Markets in Huntingdon and Mount Union. Call our office at 814-643-2751 for specials and more information. It's Monday Night Sports Talk on the airnetwork.net. Greg Banks in the studio, Dave Shannon live in Altoona, and Jimmy Ty also live in Hamburg, PA. That's down east near Philadelphia. Hey, best of luck in uh, speedy recovery to our co-host, Chad State's a little under the weather these days. Hopefully you'll be back at it very soon, Chad, so um, get well soon, please. Hey, speaking of which, Dave Shannon will be on the road actually in Huntingdon on Friday night, I think, Dave, as uh, the Huntingdon Lady Cats take on Clearfield Bison, I believe it is, the Lady Bison, coming into town to take on the Lady Cats, and you'll be doing that game live here on the Air Network, right? Yeah, you betcha. Okay. Uh, Looking forward to seeing the Lady Cats continue to grow as a team and get maturity as they move along. Uh, great game, my uh, last one we did here on mm-hmm. the airnetwork.net as they came from behind to get back into that game. And, you know, it was very competitive and within one three-point shot away from going to overtime. Yeah, so, that's right. Good yeah. stuff from them. All right. Well, we're looking forward to it. That will be coming up on Friday night. We had a couple other things scheduled, and unfortunately, with Chad out, we won't be able to make that happen. And, Dave, I will probably talk to you if we could find another basketball game between now and then. Uh, we'll see what we can do. Anyhow, it's all live here on the airnetwork.net. Jimmy, let me ask you this. You might be aware of a guy that played for the San Francisco 49ers, I think, man, probably about 25 years ago, maybe. um, Well, since then, he's been on Fox TV as a sports announcer, very creditable guy by the name of John Lynch. I think he was a baller when he played for 49ers. Well, anyhow, today... Uh. We find out that the guy is the new general manager of the 49ers. What I want to ask you and Dave is, when that happens and the guy has no experience, and you know, 49ers have been struggling the last couple of years, that ownership must be having some hard times. What do you think about a hire like John Lynch? It almost sounds to me like it's a Matt Millen hire and it's not going to work. What do you think? Oh, okay. Here's, Here's what I think. First off, John Lynch played for the Buccaneers. Mm-hmm. And then he and then he went on to play for the Broncos, which is very Broncos. important. With the Broncos, right. okay. He played under Mike Shanahan. Was he the safety, or he was? He a, was the safety. Okay. And by the right. way, John Lynch is a nice guy because I interviewed him whenever he whenever he played for Denver down in Tampa. That's right. Okay. Really nice guy. Really, really, really nice guy. But anyways, off off the point. Um, so Mike Shanahan was the coach at the time when John Lynch played for the Broncos. Okay. The GM of the team was John Elway. That's right. Okay. 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 Yeah. Now, who's the 49ers looking at to be their new head coach of their team? Kyle Shanahan. Kyle Shanahan. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so what they do is John Elway calls Jed York up and, you know, right? Okay. And says, we're going to give you, you know, John Lynch this, John Lynch that. You know, um, 
So that way they can bring in Cal Shanahan. It's like that you connection. Think, it's who you know. Yeah. Do you think Cal it's would bring his you dad? Know. You think his dad will come in as a part of that package his dad deal? Will come in. His dad will come in maybe as the offensive coordinator. Okay. And, Dave, what so, do you think of when they do a hire like that? Because, like Jimmy said, it comes down to not what you know, but who you know. And there's a reason why they position themselves that way. But we know what happened to Matt Millen when he went to Detroit as a GM. It never worked out. And he said he'll even tell you. Dude, I should have stayed on TV. Yeah. Uh, what do sometimes you think? Sometimes it works. Sometimes it doesn't. And, you know, to a degree, and I don't want to really bring politics into this as no. a total point of conversation, but not unlike higher offices in the United States of America. That's true. A lot That's depends true. on who you surround yourself with. Right. Uh, the, yeah. the success of Neil Huntingdon with the Pittsburgh Pirates is predicated on the people he surrounds himself with because he can't be everywhere. If you let and them do their talent. job, if you let them do their jobs, though, you know, if you well, actually you delegate have to have duties good people in there, too, Greg, you have to have good people, people that can see talent, people that recognize talent. Right. And that's not, you know, that's not somebody that sits down with a sheet full of stuff thinking stats yeah, in front yeah. of their nose, and they make decisions based totally on that. There are things that you have to go see that player. Mm -hmm, you mm -hmm. have to get a feel for who that player is right? as opposed to just what kind of statistics he puts up on a page. You need to know what kind of character yeah. that guy has. I mean, you know, yeah. look at Pac-Man Jones, you know. Yeah. Uh, oh, what my. Do they say? A zebra yeah. never changes its yeah. stripes. Yeah, he just you recently know? went through some more stuff. But, you know, Jimmy mentioned the name. Elway's a good example of that. A player who transitioned into management, had no real skills with management, but he's turned out, uh, I mean, just truly one of the great general managers in the NFL these days, Jimmy. So I guess we can't really discount John Lynch going in there because he doesn't have the experience. But in the fact that he got in there by default, because that's what they really call it, Dave, you know, you, you, yeah, we've sure. seen people get these jobs and it's like, dude, he got the job because he knew somebody, not because he knows anything, you know, right, right. Well, he's and, from that area, too. He went to Stanford. So he grew that's up right. He in was the Stanford. San Francisco area. OK, so so for that, I mean, I wish him the best of luck. I hope that works out. But when you take about you think about somebody and I for some reason, Matt Millen comes to my mind. You know, uh, one of those GM situations right. that so. just didn't work out. You know, it just didn't work out. But let's kind of transition from there to something else, because as I said, it's a soft week until we get to Super Bowl 51. And we will talk a little bit about that. But real quick, college basketball. I don't know if you guys have been following this or not. Yep. Pitt has been going in the tank here for the last oh, uh. since December when they beat number one. I believe it was Virginia at the time. And Virginia was not number one, but they were highly rated. The Stallings coach, I mean, he's having a big problem. These are not necessarily his players. Uh, obviously, they have sucked. They got beat by, who was it, Jimmy, the other night? It was like by 56 points. The score was 110 to like 51. And I only touch on Pitt because I don't want to talk about them. I want to talk about the basketball season because after Sunday and the Super Bowl, our attention shifts to something else. Now, I don't know if you guys have followed basketball, but you got Gonzaga, number one. Yep. Kentucky, Kansas State, and Villanova. Now, Villanova should, by all means, be number one, but they've fallen, Jimmy. Do you see them returning as the champions this year in light of what you've no, been seeing recently? No, no, Okay. They'll go far in the tournament, but all it depends on where their seating is and what the NCAA is going to do now right. is – couple weeks before, I think maybe like two or three weeks before okay. Selection Sunday is what they call it. Right. They're going to show you where the top 16 teams in each bracket, you know, the top 16 teams and where they're going to go. So it's basically like an Elite Eight. Yeah, yeah. So they're going to – so them teams like a Villanova, a Kansas, or Kentucky are going to know what seed mm -hmm. they are in the tournament. It's not going to be like last year where – Everybody's sitting on pins and needles. Yeah. Oh, Kansas is number three or Kentucky's number two. It's not going to be like that. So they're already no kind of seating going they're into the They're going to know their seating okay. like yeah. two or three weeks before. Yeah, Dave, Dave um, I was going to ask Dave, if, do you have any interest in college basketball at this time of the year, even though football will soon be over? I know you still have no, hockey, ab though. Absolutely, because I like to. 
I like to get involved with it now yeah, so that yeah. when, you know, the tournament time comes around, I at least have a feel for these teams and what they're bringing to the table. So, yeah. well, let uh, me... actually, I enjoy college basketball just about any time of the year. But, yeah, you know, yeah. my my attention will become more involved. As a matter of fact, as we're doing the show right now, mm -hmm. I'm watching Notre Dame and Duke. Uh, oh, yeah. Play their basketball hey, game. well, listen, so, I, I do want to I do want to talk about Duke a minute from now. But listen. That Kentucky-Kansas State game that was on over the weekend, and that's really my first foray into basketball this season, you know, because there was nothing really that interested me other than this kid, Grayson Allen. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Grayson Allen uh, from Duke, yeah, Jimmy. From let, Duke. let me ask you, last week, a couple weeks ago, the guy, he pitched a fit on the court. Coach K is out with uh, after that back surgery or whatever he's having, he's out. The kid looks like a real, how do I want to put this? Because you touched on it last week. It looks like a real discipline problem. But I think there is a, Punk. I think, no, but listen, I think there's a mental issue with this kid. He did something last week, and then I'm watching him play on Saturday, and he actually instigated a fight. It was one of those bench-clearing brawls that occurred, and, he's, and he sneaked away. You know, and I'm like, look at the kid. He looks like he has some kind of mental problem. Like, apparently, he's a good basketball player, but yeah, he really he, looks he like he needs. The, he, he just looks like he, he needs just help. Made an NBA three here in this game not that Did long he? ago. Yeah, but Dave, he actually looked like he needed help, and I don't know if oh, he's yeah, crying out for help or not. It sounds to me, or almost seems to me, looking at the kid, and I've been around enough kids that have been in distress. He looks like somebody that obviously needs help beyond the basketball court. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I would tend to agree. I would hate to, I would hate to think, you know, and I don't deny anyone their Second Amendment right. No, I don't either. But I would not want, and he's entitled to have a gun as long as, and I don't know anything about his background, but if he <laughs> passed that background check, he could have a gun. I wouldn't want him uh, having a gun. Yeah. He's just that kind of a guy. Yeah. You know, hey, Jimmy, you know, you and I have touched on it. Remember that guy, oh, up in East Hills, and I had to get him straight because I said, hey, man, you don't mess with my buddy. He kind of yeah. checked you hard, and I said, yeah. hey, you need to cool that because that's my friend. And because I'm thinking, well, you know, Jimmy might go off on this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, this kid looks like he's about to go off on everybody. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, yeah, and I'm sorry, but it just, he looks like he's having a problem this year. The, the thing is, is whenever you play basketball, because I've been playing basketball my whole life. Yeah. The thing is, when you play basketball, I know when I'm out there on the court, I'm focused, I'm determined to be the best. Yeah. Jason Allen's out there focused to be the best. But the thing about Grayson Allen is he he's a punk, just like the kid that I played ball with a couple <laughs> years ago up at East Hills. Yeah, I you remember know, that kid. He went up for a layup. I went to block it. I missed the block. We both rammed into the back of the uh, backboard, whatever. Yeah. You know, and all heck. Pursuits. Yeah, That's I think he kind of. I think he called you out on the court, Jim, and, and uh, quite yeah, frankly, he called you out on the court, and hey, I showed him up after that. Yeah, and hey, you know, Dave, and I had to intervene in that because I knew both parties here, and I was like, "Well, come on, dude, you know, you got." He goes, "Hey, man, I'm going to elbow him every time I get a chance." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, 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 that game, and I showed him up after that. You know, I, okay. I went out and I played my butt off, and yeah. he was nothing towards well, me. Well, my point is, and my brother, he's down there now. He's 64. He elbowed every kid in town. See, yeah. and we didn't want. I didn't want to. I didn't. Rebound. Yeah, I didn't want to play against him because I was afraid I'd lose a tooth or something. And it started fights all the time on the basketball court. And I'm telling you, this kid, Grayson Allen, is starting to instigate some things. And I don't think he's trying to, but he's. This is a learned experience, and they've gotten away with it for a long time. You know, Wait, that's all I'm saying. To the NBA, right? Yeah, when he I has know. to go against a uh, Demarcus Cousins, yeah. When he has to go against a um, Anthony Davis, well, once or, he gets uh, Andre Drummond, yeah. You know, whenever they do that, uh, rookie hazing. Yes, yes, yes. That dude's really going to get hazed. Well, they when need he to. He goes against uh, a Demarcus Cousins of the King. Well, it'd be interesting. Uh, Jason I, I, Allen's going to yeah. be in the third row, fourth row of the, of, of the arena. <laughs> I hear you. Somebody's going to elbow him out of the arena. Monday Night Sports Talk yeah. here on the AirNetwork.net. Greg Banks in the studio. Dave Shannon and Altoona Jimmy Ty in Hamburg. That's near Philadelphia. Dave, 
I know we're getting away from it here a little bit because we're trying to touch on a lot of stuff before we talk about the Super Bowl, which we've talked about ad nauseum. I'm ready for kickoff already. The only thing holding me back are the upcoming Penguins games. Tell me, how long is this All-Star break? When do we get back on the ice? They've had Tomorrow. a long enough Tomorrow. break. Okay. So the only yeah, people it's that... not a big it's not a big break, especially okay. this year because they had guys playing in that World Cup of Hockey. That's thing. right. Yeah, yeah. So yep. the schedule got condensed a little bit anyway. So, so that's that's yeah. that, that little break we had after Christmas where I kept calling you. That's about the longest break they're getting this year, then, huh? Well, it is. Yeah, they okay. actually uh, instituted something. That in was eight days, I think. Thing. Yeah. That was about they, eight days. They, what they refer to as a bye week. Every team gets one of these bye weeks now. Okay. And that's why you see teams playing a lot of games during a certain stretch of time. Yeah. Because they're building up so they have that capital there uh, as far as days off. Right. So that they can have that bye week. So the Penguins' bye week is out of the way. Mm -hmm. The all-star break is over. Yeah. We're you know, pedaled in the metal hockey from now this until is, the playoffs. And we're talking probably, what, May, June now? Because I know it's a long season. You know what I'm saying? No, it I, seems somewhere yeah, you, in May or something. Up, everything gets wrapped up there in March, and uh, you okay. start into the playoffs there uh, right. a couple weeks into April. So, All right. you I'm, know, I don't want to put you got April, May, and it wraps up in June. Yeah, I don't want to stick you, I don't want to put you out there, but I, I don't have the schedule in front of me. And unfortunately, I don't have one of those pocket schedules like I get for football. What games do we have this week? If you just take a second and, and look at that, and I'll ask Jimmy another question. Jimmy, how would you build up the Super Bowl? I mean, if you were the people planning this Super Bowl between Houston and the Patriots, is it going to be able to build by itself, or do you have to kind of, you know, kind of manifest something special so people tune in? I would, I would say in my promo, uh, the two best offenses – in the NFL playing against each other. Who's going to score more points? Okay, so you're, you're the, sort of the like... The greatest okay. of all time or yeah. the Falcons? Okay, so the upstart or the veterans, right? Yeah. And it's going to come down to... We really understand it comes down to... Brady is the, the, the face oh. of the Patriots. And who do you make the face of the Falcons? Would it be Matty Ice or does it have to be Jones? Or is it a combination thereof? You know I have a man crush on Julio Jones. Right I know now, you do. So. Okay, because you're it's the one. Be, no, yeah. No, no. Honestly, it, it, it'll, it'll be Matt Ryan. So you Matt wouldn't Ryan like if sure. you ran into Julio, you wouldn't say, "Oh my God, look at your hands." <laughs> no, I would not say that. Not my say that. my brother has this thing where he always asks people like, "What size shoe do you wear?" And I said to him one day, "Why do you ask these people what size shoe they wear?" And he kind of giggled. And I'm like. Does that mean something? Maybe I don't understand it. But I said Shaq probably has size 22. What are you going to do then? Your eyes getting real big or what? You know. Basically, Shaq has size 24. So. There you go. So what's the difference? You know. What's it's the like, difference too, yeah. you know? It's like, no, okay. But no, I, no, I would say the, uh, the face of the Falcons right now is Matty Ice. Okay. Okay. Well, anyhow, there was a falsehood when I was a teenager. They said, well, you check a girl's belly button. That pretty much gives you an indication of what that girl's all about. And I'm like, oh, okay. So, uh, Dave, what do you find out about the Penguins? Like, when are they playing? Yeah, it's a, a three-game week, as it is next week as well. We get king things kicked off tomorrow night in Pittsburgh against the Predators. Mm -hmm. And so that's a 7 o'clock game. 7 o'clock then on Friday. Right. Uh, one of those Friday, weird Friday games at mm. Pittsburgh as they host the Blue Jackets. That's wow. going to be a big game. That's a good one. And then, then the Pens take a trip to St. Louis on Saturday to wow. take on the Blues. Man. And that's an interesting thing that that's happened to the Penguins That's an interesting travel. Here. Yeah. Uh, the Penguins, uh, in their last two games against teams that decided to be physical with them, uh -huh. uh, the Penguins won, and a lot of teams saw what the Penguins did by utilizing speed and were able to win a Stanley Cup and started to rebuild their teams to somewhat mimic the Penguins. And you saw... In the last two games the Penguins played, which were against the uh, the St. Louis Blues and Boston. the Boston Bruins, right. yep. that the big physical teams actually shut them down. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, that game, I look at that game Saturday as a big one for Coach Sullivan and the squad to say, yeah, okay, so maybe you can shut us down for one game, but you're not going to shut us down completely. So that's going to be so. a pivotal key. And, of course, in this season overall – 
uh, this week is going to be a very important week because, I mean, they had some momentum going before the All-Star break, correct? Well, the, those two losses came right before. They, oh, okay. they had won yeah. three in a row, and then they dropped a couple. So, yeah. um, you know, not so much that much momentum. One of the big things here is whether Chris Letang comes back mm-hmm. and plays uh, tomorrow night because it is going to be a game-day decision, and it doesn't look like Evgeny Malkin will be uh, involved in tomorrow's game at all against the Predators. But uh, Penguins with 30 wins on the season, uh, you have an 80-game schedule. I, I've said, and you don't want to do this, but yeah. I've said to a number of folks that I've talked to about the Penguins that they could go 500 the remainder of the regular season and still be a part of the playoffs. Oh, yeah. As many yeah. games over 500 as they are now. Monday Night so, Sports Talk on the airnetwork.net. Dave Shannon and Al Tuna, Jimmy Ty in Hamburg near Philadelphia. Hey, we talked with Ike last week on Thursday. He talked a little bit about the Antonio Brown situation. He didn't make any bones about it. He did say, however, that there is a lack of leadership, um, you know, on the team. He didn't want to say that Ben's a leader. He didn't really point anybody out as a leader. But uh, when Tomlin made that veil, uh, sort of like, uh, oh, you know, whenever he made that threat towards Antonio by saying, basically, hey, our guys are bouncing around from team to team all over the league. He was trying to make a point, sort of like San Antonio... Uh, what was his name? Holmes, Santonio Holmes. San Antonio Holmes. He was yeah. a great receiver, if you remember the year we won the Super Bowl. Gone the next. There's reasons why guys move on. You know what I mean? And so Ike was kind of saying, and I think John Harris alluded to the fact more so than Ike. It's like you know what? Um, Antonio Brown sort of looking out for himself. You know, it's sort of like it's a me situation with him. He was making like a half a million dollars off of Facebook, the live thing. And uh, when Tomlin made that threat, I guess uh, basically I, all he could say was, yeah, but you know what? It's good. Martavius Bryant's coming back next year. That's all he could say during the whole show. Martavius coming back next year. And he never mentioned Antonio and... He never mentioned, he said about number seven, talking about Ben, who's talking about maybe leaving. Ben has to pay them $18 million if he wants to leave next season. He's still under contract. You think, guys, let me ask you guys this. Do you think Ben's going to walk away from $18 million, Dave, and then Jimmy? Uh, No, I don't. (laughs) And I have become recently, and I've heard this on local sports talk uh, with somebody that does a show out of the Altoona area. I've heard this on the uh, uh, CW in Pittsburgh has a nightly sports talk ah, show. That's right. At about 1030. At Poppy night. Annie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I have never heard the term drama queen. <laughs> used More so than so last frequently week. Yes. How about in that? In regards to anybody. And that's what it was all about, Ben. And you I know, Ben's Ike, a drama queen. Yeah. And, okay. I didn't want, and you can understand why Ike didn't want to use that term. Because, I mean, he's close to these guys. He played with these sure. guys. And he's very careful when he says that. But it, he alluded to the fact that Johnny said it for him. Hey, he whines. He's a drama queen. You know I mean? Just yeah. say it. And that's sad. But the reality is, too, you know, Ben's getting up there. He's 35. He's got kids. If he doesn't, he's going to have to get out of the league sometime. But we're not going to be ready. That's the sad part. Because when I said to Ike the other night, well, who's going to quarterback? Well, John Harris stepped in and said, what did he say? He told us, Jimmy, last week, Landry Jones. Landry Jones. Landry Jones is your quarterback you. because you guys didn't prepare to get anybody else in the backfield. So could you and imagine we're is, stuck with him? Oh, God. How about Tony? <laughs> bring Tony Romo over or Garoppolo? He's working. At, he's probably going to be looking for a job. The funny thing is it's. Uh, we said that Ben's like about 35 years old. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tom Brady's 39 years old, and he'll be 50. He'll hear still him be complaining. Yeah, he'll still be playing at 50, though. That's he'll the still difference. Be playing. You know, you know, you don't hear him complaining. Oh, you know, I'm this, I'm that. And Tom Brady tore what was it like his ACL a few years ago? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Right. Hey, he's not complaining about that. Oh right. no, my ACL. I got sacked by so and so. I got <laughs> sacked by him. No, Tom Brady's like, you know what? I'm going to go out there and play until they can carry me off the field. Just like Marty Ranovonic at WJAC. 
going to be anchoring on TV till he croaks on TV. Yeah, and that's going to be sad because he had another uh, kind of a bad experience today, and he put it on Facebook, and he says, I got to do a 90-minute show yet. And I'm like, dude, why don't you just yeah. walk away? Are you going to end up yeah. dying on television? Seriously, I don't want to be watching Channel 6 News and seeing my friend just die there. You know, just hey, move uh, on. Well, just remember this. He would not be the first guy that do th- 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 that happened to. Uh, you remember Harry Callis? Oh, was that, was that during a game? Know, I mean, he died in the broadcast. See, booth. I didn't remember that, Dave. And I wasn't or, uh, listening that night. I usually watch. It was in Washington. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. Well, I don't want to. Washington. They were playing the Nationals. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to see and that. So, you know, there's there's Harry Callis going that way. And just to bring that point one step further. Mm. Now, you, you know, this guy may be is making a move because he wants to or because ESPN is forcing him to. Brent Musburger will do his last broadcast. That's right. I saw that. The Disney affiliation, yeah. be that ABC or ESPN, yeah. tomorrow night. Uh, you don't think he'll move back night. to CBS or something? I mean, is he, is he I, done for good? I don't good? know. I mean, he doesn't seem like he really wants to retire, per se. Yeah. And he's been castigated because he used, oh, geez, I guess, it, it, yes, it's an old-fashioned thing. Yeah. Uh, yes, he made a big deal about how pretty the one quarterback's yeah, did. girlfriend yeah. <laughs> was, and then that his mo- her mother yeah. was a pretty darn good-looking woman, too. Oh, and, of my. course, those are things you can't say. You today. can't say it. You can yeah. think that, but don't put that. Hopefully it never comes out of your mouth yeah, during a care. national broadcast. Yes, thank you, Jimmy. Yeah, yeah that's so. Was. Well, let me ask and, you this real quick. I don't remember him doing that. The kid was from Alabama, wasn't he? The quarterback yeah, at the time. A.J. McCarron. Oh, now, the, And the most recent one he was just did it he recently. stuck up. Uh, in the Clemson Ohio State game, I think it was. <laughs> I, he did. Yeah. Uh, I, I forget which player he stuck up for, who had been suspended and oh, came back, and he was my. saying he hoped that you know uh, that that he was going to be. And he started to stumble around it. It was almost like, oh crap! He I didn't want to say it, but he went too far, and I didn't really want to. You <laughs> <Yeah. know? laughs> hey, well, listen, this happened to the best of us, and if it can happen to Brent, then I don't feel so bad if it happens to me when I get that foot and mouth disease. But let me ask you this as we wrap things up. Penn State wrestlers, number one in the nation this year. Was there any other reason that they shouldn't be? And as they head towards the tournament, maybe another national championship. If Chad were here, he'd talk more about that. But here's something you guys can relate to. Dave, especially you, because I hope that you do some baseball and softball games for the Air Network this year in high school. The PIAA has adapted a 100-pitch count in high school baseball, and that starts this season. Now, it used to be that they would allow you to pitch so many innings. Now, it's 100 pitches per game. Then you have to sit out, I believe, one game and then come back. Is that something that Pennsylvania should have been looking at years ago? Because other states enacted that years ago. Yeah, I, I and I would tend to agree that they probably should have. It's a part of baseball now. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, look, uh, even Little League Baseball. Oh, yeah, they that's have right. Now, they, they have, have the count. pitch count clocks right there yeah, that's when you right. watch the Little League World Series. And they have them even so, in Huntington. The uh, sheets, like, uh, donated one, and it's in the outfield. And the coaches had to get acclimated to reading the pitch count. And, of course, somebody had to keep track of it, you know, so it could come up on the screen. Yeah. Yeah. So the bottom line is – it's a, it's a good idea, especially at Little League. I mean, one of the things that they try to do in Little League is to try to keep the kids from throwing curveballs oh, because man. it can be very damaging right. if you're not doing it correctly. Mm-hmm. And even if you are doing it correctly, it's still not it's that a good. Ball. It's not a natural motion No, at all. it's not. And I've seen so many kids ruin their arms even like 30, 40 years ago. Because of the curveball or the drop ball. But, Jimmy, let me wrap this things up, and you and Dave can talk about this. Joey Porter, Mike Tomlin, their kids go to North Catholic High School. They play football. Joey shows up. He's smoking a cigar. He was told not to smoke. It's a non-tobacco location. Mike is there. Mike drops a couple F-bombs because the ref made a bad call. He and Joey are asked to get off the fence. It's a cyclone fence now. And they don't heed the call. Security has to come. And Joey says something like, oh, now you're going to remove us from the field, even though he walked out on the field after a referee at a high school game. As a result, wow. <laughs> listen, wow. you guys probably weren't aware of this, and I should have brought it up earlier. As a result, 
They both get kicked out of the game. Security doesn't have to take them out. Then they pull their kids out of North Catholic High School. I just want your impressions on. I want your impressions on this, guys, at North Catholic High School. What well, in the hell's going on? And why would Tomlin get involved in that? I know Joey Porter has that kind of attitude, but I never knew that Mike had that. Well, the thing is, is my we got sister a minute. texted me that the other day because uh, her kids go to uh, North Allegheny. They High go to School Allegheny, and, right? And because of uh, what happened at North Catholic, the Porter and Gilden's kids are Jason Gilden, by the way, the former Steeler. That's right. Their kids, their kids are going to be going and playing this year for the North Allegheny Tigers. So, so was it Gilden's kid that was, uh, or was it yeah. Tomlin's kid too? It was Jason Gilden, because Tomlin has kids around my around New Season. Now they're young kids, that's right. Okay. They're young so, kids. Yeah. He yeah, just so went Jason to the Jason Gilden and, yeah. and Joey Porter. And he went to the game with Joey Porter and uh yeah. Gilden to watch those games. Okay, that's what it yeah. was. So it's gonna be North Allegheny High School. Well my question is then yeah, my question, Dave, real quick, you've got thirty seconds, is like what kind of what kind of I mean, you're an ambassador for the Steelers. You're the head coach. You're Joey Porter. This happened back in October. We're just finding out about it now. I mean, you can't let that kind of thing happen. No, it's tip tip of the iceberg of a problem, and it needs to be dealt with. And the way it gets dealt with is you're not a part of our organization because you're not above anything. I don't care. You know, the PIAA sets the rules. Mm -hmm. They select the officials. It's a freaking high school football game. Yeah. So we... You know, we don't want you to have anything more to do with our professional football. And it didn't no seem way. like the parents were bitching about it. I mean, the other parents didn't seem, except, you know, Mike, they were he's asked to sit down in the stands and they look back, uh, you know, kind of like confronted the other parents, like, what the are you talking about? You know, and then Joey decides to go out on the field after a ref one day when they called the security people. Yeah, time you know, to go. Somebody yep. got, yeah. It just seems like it's coming unhinged, dudes. I don't imagine you're going to see Porter on the sideline with the Steelers, and I got to agree, I might give Tomlin one more year and then see ya. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you, yeah, you got to have those guys under control. All right, who are you taking in the Super Bowl? Day first, you and then Jimmy, and we'll get out of here. I'm sticking with the Pats, 35 to 28. Okay, Jimmy? Falcons, uh... I'll say 24-17. All right. Well, okay. Atlanta. Hey, enjoy the Super Bowl. 51, guys. The Patriots and the Falcons. We'll be back here Monday night. We'll talk more about it. Thank you, Dave Shannon. Thank you, Jimmy Ty. Have a great one. So long. Thank you, Greg. Good night. Good night. Good night.